And as always, we're recording. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is sometimes we work really quickly and we want to make sure that we have a chance to capture all of the action items or the questions or the comments that are made during these subcommittees. But the most important one is that we understand, and especially as we grow our subcommittee base here um, in implementing the Stockton SERP, uh, not everyone has a time or capacity to attend every meeting, at least while it, you know, during the time that it's scheduled. So we will record and post all of these meetings as well as the meeting notes, follow up action items and any other relevant um, actions that come out of these subcommittee meetings to our website. Um, so that's why we have them all recorded as we do with all of our other subcommittees and our regular CSC meeting. All right, so maybe I'll start with just so we don't take up too much time and then as others can join, they can certainly uh, jump in line. I'd love to start with just a quick brief introduction if everyone can, again, since I don't know that we're all familiar with each other, I'm seeing a couple new faces and we certainly have a few new faces on the district side um, that don't always attend our meetings, but they're they're working hard on, in the background and will be working a lot on these types of programs. So I'm Jessica Olson. I am a, the Director of Community Strategies and Resources with the Air District. And so that's really over AB 617, but any other community strategies we implement on a community level here at the district, um, I or someone on my team will be involved in. Um, so I will pass it and in, in my order, maybe I'll just pass it to Popcorn and you pick another person. So I'm gonna pass it to Ned. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay. I'm Ned Lieb, I'm a resident. Uh, I'm on the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee of the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, AB 617. And I do wanna say trees have always been something that I've advocated for because I think it's an unambiguous good that conveys clearly some environmental benefits. And it seems like they do uh, provide some um, protections against the deleterious effects of some exposure. So I thought it was something that was very important to be part of our AB 617 plan and in general an approach to air pollution. So thanks for having the subcommittee. Oh, right. do I have to pass on? Please. I got, he I got Heather Hicks next. Hinks, I'm sorry. Thanks, thank you, that's okay. Hello everyone, I'm Heather Hinks. Um, I am on the outreach and communications team at the district and have been hanging along in this process the whole time and happy to be here and thrilled about trees. I'm gonna pass it off to Scott. Hey, good afternoon everybody. My name is Scott Wall. I'm with the California Air Resources Board and I work in the Office of Community Air Protection and I am the assigned staff liaison uh, to help support the AB 617 process in the community of Stockton. And I am thrilled to be part of the process in Stockton. And I will hand it over to, is it Aluchi? Yes, that's right. Hi everyone, um, I'm working in the city of Stockton office as a Leaf for America fellow on the TCC grant and I'm really happy to be with you all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to the person below me, which is Anthony. Thank you, I'm Anthony Presto. I'm an outreach and communications representative with the San Joaquin Valley Air District uh, providing support, maybe six of the Stop Stockton uh, Community Steering Committee. And I do whatever health Heather tells me to do. Uh, let's go to Aaron. Uh, sure, uh, my name is Aaron Tarango. I'm a, a program manager in our grant department here at the Air District. And I oversee a lot of the, the heavy duty stuff, uh, a lot of agricultural, uh, replacement programs for tractors, ag pumps, uh, and also locomotives, as far as that goes, um, school buses. And then also, uh, you know, I take on the challenge of uh, vegetated barriers, urban green, which is new to us as far as the district goes. So we're kind of, kind of learning as we go to, I know there's a lot of information out there to grab onto from the state and from other things that have been done, but we're also, it's kind of, uh, to start with, it's out of our realm, so we're, we're really very fast and, uh, and uh, to make this very successful. And I'll pass it on to, how about Jeff Wingfield? 
Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Jeff Wingfield with the Port of Stockton. Um, so when I when I first got to the port, the port was pretty desolate. There was there was not vegetation. There was we had a couple little remnant strips of vegetation, and I was kept asking, why don't we bring more of that to the port? And so, thankfully, in the past couple of years, we've been able to plant hundreds of trees out there. We we're now looking at a vegetative barrier along the eastern boundary of the port just to start, and really incorporating vegetation, landscaping, and um, tree planting into our overall future growth opportunities. So excited to be here. Let's go to Margo. Oh, I was going to pass it to Margo. Oh, Thank perfect. You. I read your mind. I get two votes. Um, I'm Margo Prouss. I'm a resident uh, on the steering committee, the CSC steering committee, and um, a chair of the local Sierra Club in our area. And I just need to give kudos to Ned for speaking out about trees for as long as he has, as well as Jeff at the port, because I know he, the port did a tree survey um, in the past, and that's that's available. And also to TCC, because I think they have, um, they're focusing on trees as well. So thank you. Oh, I'm gonna pass it to, um, um, uh, Brianna. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Um, my name is uh, Brianna Garcia. I'm um, working with um, uh, um, Little Manila Rising um, through our Green Lining the Hood initiative to um, plant more trees in Stockton. And so um, I'm, I'm um, part of the TCC um, uh, grant that um, Stockton has. And I'll pass it over to Nicolas Tamayo. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nico. I'm the urban forestry coordinator with Little Manila Rising, um, doing the community tree planting effort through that grant. Um, and myself or Brianna or our supervisor, Irene, will likely be the delegate to this uh, subcommittee moving forward. So happy to be here. Um, and I will pass it to Nate. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I joined the uh, AB 617 uh, as CSC member in April. I, I missed the original meetings in March that were still in person just before COVID. Uh, back in 2020. Uh, I'm primarily brought on board as a retired transit person. I was the director of, of planning for San Joaquin Regional Transit District, and I have very extensive knowledge of scheduling, the scheduling, maintenance, and operation of electric buses, So, uh, which fits into a lot of the new electrical technology. And now we'll talk about charging stations and infrastructure and training mechanics. Uh, having said that, uh, I've been a lifelong advocate for uh, uh, environment and, and I've been worried about climate change for 40 years. I'm not a latecomer to the issue. And so my expertise is primarily environmental studies, urban planning and public transportation. Awesome, thanks Nate. Um, let's pass it to Jonathan. Hey everyone, Jonathan Pruitt, uh, San Joaquin County Program Coordinator, Catholic Charities Diocese Stockton. Uh, I think we could safely say that uh, Catholic Charities was really trying to bring this together. So we're glad to see it happen. We've been on top of it since 2018. Um, and I'm really glad we were able to leverage parts of TCC and to get something involved in AB 617. And so we're gonna try our best to uh, be included or try to attend all subcommittees. So uh, good luck to us, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I'll let me turn it over to um, Mary Elizabeth. Oops, you're muted. So my big claim to fame is a fourth generation Stocktonian. And uh, we uh, have not ever lived in uh, fancy parts of town. And I know uh, personally the difference in environment that trees make. Heat islands are a reality for folks here in Stockton. 
and they not only can help with air quality, but can relieve some of the suffering associated with our uh, climate change adaptation. So I'm glad to be here. And I picked UC Davis as uh, my school of first choice because of all the trees. So. That's so great. Um, I don't think you've heard this Cynthia yet. Cynthia, if you're talking, you're on mute. Justice Coalition for Water. So I'm very much interested in environmental issues and social justice issue. And I always put myself as someone in a learning mode because when I hear people talk about their experiences and you know the things that interest them and their knowledge base, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a newbie novice when it comes to this whole um, environmental arena and climate change adaptation. So I've always been someone that's been interested in the environment because you know, I love our national park system, you know, and so that's where I started from was just, you know, enjoying nature, enjoying our beaches. And then, you know, I met someone that um, shared with me about, um, you know, the detrimental effects that you know, certain um, business practice has on our environment. And I, as I learn more, um, I've just gained more interest in the causes of environmental social justice issues. So I'm very happy to be part of this tree sub community and to learn more about how we can improve our air quality by um, having more trees and more vegetation around this. Great, thanks, Cynthia. I, I think Stephanie and Zong, if I'm not mistaken, are our last two. So Stephanie, why don't we have you go first? Sure, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Ng and I work with Jessica as an air quality specialist in the Community Strategies and Resources Department. I'm very excited to be with you all today. And then Ms. Zong, everyone knows who Zong is. Hi, my name is Zong Song and I'm with uh, our the Valley Districts uh, uh, outreach and communications department and you probably get lots of emails from me um, so uh, please save my email so that that way my e the emails that come uh, from me don't go to your spam box and just to give you guys a heads up I Ed is trying to get on so I'm helping him so hopefully he pops in awesome I'm sorry what'd you say last Ed Ward is uh, trying to get in and I'm helping him. So hopefully he pops in. Awesome. I know this is a big, big thing. And I think we all have heard Ed in various different iterations, much like Ned, um, very, very big proponent for urban greeting. So I appreciate that. Um, so I think we have a couple people as people join us, we'll definitely welcome them, let them introduce themselves, but we definitely want to get going here. We only have an hour scheduled for today. And to be fully honest, of course, it's up to how we run, want to decide to run the committee and that's going to be this first topic. But we, we hope to make these meetings um, and we won't always spend time introducing ourselves, but it's probably appropriate in our first meeting, but we hope to make these meetings you know, really business, down to business, keep them an hour. We have a lot of meetings to get to. And if we're, if several of you are on just a handful of subcommittees plus the regular CSC meeting, it does tend to be a lot if they're more than an hour. So that's the goal, but obviously if there's things to be done or we as a committee decide we need a longer meeting, maybe we're inviting people, then we can certainly work together. Um, again, it's a, it's a community driven process. That's what your charter asks. Um, so it certainly can be amended. That's just our goal, at least for today. Um, I'm gonna start with actually what I just mentioned a little bit and definitely wanna turn it over to you, but with a brief introduction of you recall you all adopted your uh, recent charter amendments and a lot of the hard work done by really steering committee members to come up with some structure to how subcommittees are run. This is something that wasn't in the charter. Um, we uh, as a district and other communities have really left the subcommittees. They, they kind of each operate pretty differently from each other depending on the type of committee. But one of the main roles and responsibilities that was outlined in your charter um, recently was the idea that the CSC can start leading these meetings. So wouldn't be 
like the, what I'm doing right now would be someone from the CSC. Um, that doesn't mean it has to be, obviously it's up to everyone's comfort level, but what's in your charter right now is a volunteer to facilitate meetings. Now, again, it says, you know, the district or the facilitation team can do this. So definitely no fretting if, if no one, you know, is up to the task, at least as of yet. But that person would run down the agenda during the meeting, um, would work with the district and the CSC to set the agenda as we kind of always do with all our other meetings. Um, that person can take notes or appoint someone to take notes. And then as always, as we do with breakout groups, um, and we would definitely want to do with all our subcommittees, is the idea with a subcommittee is that we do the, the nitty gritty, the hard work, and then we report back to the CSC in sort of a, a condensed fashion during a standing update. So the reason I'm bringing this up is this is our first subcommittee meeting after we've adopted that charter. And so I wanted to take a moment and I'll leave this up here, um, but definitely ask for help. It's hard to, to facilitate um, question answering while I'm sharing my screen, but see if anyone kind of seeing this, and I know we have a lot to get to in terms of what we're even talking about, but whether it's at this moment or at the end of the meeting, much like a community co-host, either be thinking now, provide comments or updates right now, or by the end of the meeting, think if this is something that you are interested in doing for the next subcommittee meeting. One thing I will say is right now, since we didn't have one officially for today, we are taking on that role. We will be taking notes, we will be posting notes. And for those that were unable to attend our meeting last night, we are uh, and will be working on updating our website to make speci um, subcommittee specific sections where this recorded uh, version of the meeting as well as any of the notes and action items we take will be posted. So definitely no, no fretting for today, but if someone feels that at the end of this meeting, or again, right now, if you're feeling into it, you want to volunteer, your charter does leave room for this. And we definitely wanted that to be a main um, discussion topic for to start this meeting off. With that said, are there any questions or thoughts when it comes to this subcommittee on sort of the community led piece um, of facilitation or note taking or reporting out. Any questions? Anyone super interested in doing it next time already, even though they don't really know what the next time looks like? All right, I'll take that all as everyone's contemplating and everyone's super interested. They just don't wanna be the first to raise their hand. Um, but certainly again, uh, uh, the way that it's written in the charter, and, and, and again, I'm not saying this to pressure anyone, it's written in the charter really, I imagine, as an example of, a, of the process that could be. So we will offer this every time, but otherwise we are more than happy to, as always, work with you all on the agenda, work with you all on what needs to happen, and do all of the facilitation, again, however much that the committee needs to be supported. But again, it is always there if you as a committee feel or someone feels like, you know what, I want to run it next time. Maybe I want to learn how to run or facilitate a meeting. Maybe I want to build that capacity. These are great opportunities and we will always offer it. So I'll just say that now. And definitely this might be just a, a slide that we regularly share at the beginning of every subcommittee meeting. So cool. Hey, Go ahead. Hey, uh, Jessica. Um, hi, um, I, I'm, I'm down. Um, to to facilitate, though I, I am a little bit intimidated um, because it's like via Zoom, and so Zoom adds a layer of like intimidation for me, but I'm totally down, I'm totally down to um, learn how to facilitate. I think that's awesome. So I will say when it comes to Zoom, we will always do the Zoomy stuff. So definitely no worries about the tech stuff or about calling on raising hands. Um, and uh, I, I, I totally know what you mean. Zoom actually does, it feels more intimate than presenting in person sometimes, right? You're like in the person's living room or office. And um, yeah, we, we, I appreciate that, Brianna. Awesome. Well, like I said, for today's meeting, we will be taking notes, we will follow up. And then as always, we will follow up um, with whoever decides to facilitate in this case, um, Brianna and make sure that moving forward, um, you are supported. It wouldn't just be like blindly running um, the show. We definitely would even maybe work with the facilitator, the new facilitator to help with that training in those next steps. Well, awesome. That's an exciting way to start. So a couple of things, I'm actually going to stop. Oh, I stopped sharing my screen now. There we go. 
Um, so I, to segue into sort of what the rest of this meeting is going to look like, I wanted to let you know, and we mentioned it last night, but I'm going to kick it over to Erin Tarango, who is with our Grants and Incentives Department and oversees the trees and urban greening um, and vegetative barriers work in our other two communities, to let you know sort of where we're at in that process. Um, we actually have a couple of slides to talk a little bit about um, some of the input you have all already given us and how that input and input from other communities has driven us to be where we're at. And then just to sort of update you on what the next steps are in terms of getting a program or several projects going, because these are, we're actually talking about two different measures, right? We're talking about urban greening, which is planting trees throughout the community. We talked about urban heat islands. I heard that a couple of times in our intros. And we're talking about vegetative barriers, which is much more of a structured set of trees that particularly block or prevent pollution from impacting maybe a certain population. So definitely keeping that in mind. I'm gonna pass it to Erin to sort of give a high level overview and then I'll, I'll show some slides and just work on some feedback and next steps with you all. Yeah, um, we'll start. Um, we just got through uh, getting the vegetative barrier and urban green programs approved through our board for the Fresno and chapter areas, which is great because it, it lets us basically kind of continue on with the rest of the community to go back to the board again, once we have kind of a plan set up for Stockton essentially. So kind of the next step is, is to write a plan to ARB, which we kind of piggyback off plans of our submitted ARB for uh, chapter in Fresno. But based upon some feedback we get from the community here, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, add some things into the plan itself to make sure we address any uh, concerns this specific community has, as the other ones address the, uh, the concerns those communities have. Then once that happens, we submit it to ARB, they go over and, and make sure it hits all the points we've talked about, which it should, because we kind of have a baseline already. They give it back to us and they officially approve it. And then at that point in time, we start going through kind of the RFP process. Like, how do we select some company to do this? You know, it's got to be, you know, if the same company does barriers and urban greening, it could be separate. Depends on the RFP, how it's set up, right? Because we set the RFP up and we have criteria in there that they would want to follow. Like, they need to plant so many trees or we want these located here. What We're proposing vegetative barriers in those locations. Can it be done? Because as we found out through the process, sometimes you want a barrier in certain areas and you just can't do it. Whether it be uh, issues with zoning, whether it be issues where they won't give you the rights to the land, because there, there's a lot of things that go into this, uh, as I think maybe Jeff found out from the report there, that there's a lot that goes into planting a barrier or just trees where you gotta have ongoing maintenance. They don't just die um, <laughs> a year after they're planted. I mean, that, I mean, that would be the, the you know, catastrophe if that were to happen. So part of it is, is you, you work, we work with a third party administrator to administrate uh, the program. And they set up agreements with the landowners to make sure that these trees are taken care of, whether it be a barrier or, or urban greening, to make sure that for the next you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years, that once they get going, they're up and good, but to make sure that there is stuff there. If something were to die, they can replant it. Um, you know, and going, just going down a couple of steps is to make sure the right trees are planted. Make sure that the trees are native to the area. Make sure that you have the right root system, you know, for the area you're going to be at. There's a lot of things that 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 need to go in, and there's there's a lot of um, tools that have been used already from from through the state. There's an eye tree thing. There's a there's a many I, I, off the top of my head I'm trying to go into, it, but there's many tools that are used to show you how good a barrier is going to be or how many trees are going to do what they're going to actually produce for you as far as reducing emissions. Um, like I said, and the main major thing too, obviously we're in a drought, right? So make sure we have water. We have water access to these trees. They're getting watered on a day, on a, not a daily, but on a normal basis to make sure they survive. Um, and those agreements are very, very important as we work through this stuff. And that'd be part of kind of our, as we work with this, this group here, develop kind of the RP and, you know, what we came up with and talk about those, those things as we move through there. Um, you know, it's not a, it's, it's not an instantaneous thing to get a barrier up. Uh, it takes a while, a lot of planning to make sure it goes in the right spot make sure we have all the approvals, uh, where it can actually go and do they, and will, will they give us the right to, to put it there or the community to put it in certain areas, right? 
and even trees for that matter. You know, you know, some people I don't want to tree there, damage this, you damage like concrete, could damage a house. So you got to, there's a lot of things that go into it. We've got to make sure we hit all those targets. We'll, we'll say. Um, I'll kind of stop there uh, and some blather on too much. I'll stop there and maybe answer some questions. Maybe uh, Jessica has a question that I missed, I'm sure. Yeah, I was going to say what I'll do. So just to, to summarize what Aaron just said, and I think I think those of you, it sounds, to be honest, given what we just talked about and all the intros I heard, you are all probably more familiar, or a lot of you are more familiar with this process than we are, especially those involved in TCC um, who are maybe going through this type of thing right now. But in summary, the thought is that we would, we're not, you know, the Air District, we're not tree planters by any means. Uh, we can certainly evaluate things from an air quality perspective, but the idea is we would go out for an RFP as a request for proposal get a proposal from a professional group of people that know what they're doing, but make sure that we evaluate it against some critical, critical things that we want to work with you on to making, to make sure you as the experts and you as the residents are helping us in that evaluation. So I'm going to share quickly a slide and then definitely take any questions. This was generally the notes, you know, when we, when, as Aaron mentioned, we did have a program, set of programs for Fresno and in Shafter, where we took um, a set of sort of general, now these aren't super specific, as you know, as you can tell, but general guidelines by which we would not even award money if people didn't think about these critical items. So one of the things we want to work with you on, although you're seeing this general list here, which include what Aaron just mentioned, water, maintenance, the tree type and leaf type are very important if we're talking about blocking pollution, right? We obviously want to make sure the air emissions, maybe the trees themselves can emit, you know, there's definitely some balance there. They, they can actually emit um, pollution, but obviously their resistance to block pollution, something that Ned talked about in the beginning, it's all a delicate balance. And there are technical people and technical tools that allow us to evaluate this but we aren't really the people to do that. So we definitely want to make sure we have all of our ducks in a row where you all will help us write that program plan and the request for proposals because you all can help provide insight we don't have, but that the, once we get those requests for proposal, once we evaluate them against the criteria we've come up with, then we work with the organization that applied to then do all of that work after we've kind of set the stage for what that work should look like. And then can I add something there, Jessica, is that one of the main things too, obviously in, that, in this process is I know there's a TCC grant up in the area. So what we'd like to do is, you know, if we could not, not, not expand that one, but leverage against that to expand it as well, right? So like, instead of doing, I don't know what the, I don't know what kind of bridge you have research that, that grant up there, but let's say it's for 500 trees. Well, you would say, okay, let's expand that and do now a thousand trees. Right. right, 500 beyond that to make that even bigger. Like, so there's there's areas to make things bigger. They're obviously separate ones as well, but there's also ways to leverage the funding that's already occurring in the community to make the, that a little bigger and better. Uh, is what we want to look at. We want to look at everything there to make sure we're, we're hitting our targets. There. So I definitely want to pause there and just those that are involved in TCC have been involved in projects like this. The general thought of doing a, as Aaron mentioned, we have to do program plan first with CARB, but we hope that's streamlined, but we'll definitely run it by you all first before we submit it to CARB, but streamlined in the sense that CARB has already approved it for Fresno and Schachter. Um, But then B, put together an RFP again with you all to make sure we're sort of touching on the points you are all thinking of maybe more than we are. Go ahead, Margo. Yeah, can you, um, can you share what CARB has approved for Fresno and Schachter? Chapter. Totally. Um, I'm going to do what I always do where I'm like, Heather, drop it in. We can actually share the exact document. Um, I did. So let me, let me point to, I think I put it in this next slide, but, and I'll, we'll post these slides as well, but yeah, so we do have, and I'll open it here as well. And I did have Heather drop it in the chat. Um, but it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's a big document. It talks like a lot of details. It literally bullet points non-invasive species, non-poisonous, so it's a lot of research that went into developing this and CARB approved it. Um, so the idea is that we would probably look at this, a, a very, very, very similar document for you all, but certainly get your feedback before we resubmit um, to CARB for the Stockton program. But definitely a lot 
Um, what she has, um, she being Heather just dropped in the chat is something for you all to peruse, but we definitely think the next step before the next subcommittee meeting is we would send you a draft version for Stockton, have you all review it, um, and then prepare to discuss it at the next subcommittee meeting. I think I see Ned physically raising his hand. Can I just make a couple of comments as to where I think the subcommittee would be most helpful consistent with what was said here? I think where our subcommittee would be most helpful besides of course being involved in the RFP process is suggesting where uh, we might wanna have vegetative barriers, rows of urban trees, where do we want to have them? And I certainly agree that we should think about expanding off of where TCC or Puentes are doing things. Okay, then the, to me, what's uh, important is that we not only uh, think about the location, but that we convey to the steering committee that, and the air monitoring subcommittee that we think there should be measurements of what the air pollution is, PM 2.5, NOx, SOx, VOC, some of that you might be able to measure, let's say on the population facing side versus on the road side where there may be vehicles or trains or the port so that we can quantify what we think will be, but we're not sure, the benefits of the exposure. We know there are gonna be aesthetic benefits, but we're, like you said, we're in the air pollution control district. So fundamental uh, is that all of these projects, whether they're vegetative barriers or urban trees, if there's some density, we think about monitoring exposure population facing versus perhaps roads and uh, that carry both vehicle traffic and railroads and port traffic. The last thing which you spoke of too is that we have got to get some feedback from the residents and the people in the area. And while I think trees are a wonderful thing, uh, we, you know, this has to be something that really is acceptable to the folks uh, who are going to be the neighbors of the tree. So those are, uh, I think, uh, how we as a subcommittee can really help the process. Thank you. That's a great no, that, those point. Are, those are great points. Those are great points because the, the buy-in from the community is very important. Like, yeah, I want a tree here. We, we need to do something here where, rather than, no, don't put it there. I don't want it there, you know. It's very important. And then we found with Fresno as well, the, the urban, like a vegetated barrier. There's very clear-cut EPA guidance what barrier should be, the width, the height, the density of it. Um, what kind of material should be there as far as trees go, bushes, whatever have you. And you just can't put that anywhere with the, how big it is, right? So that, that's, that's key as well. And then kind of one sub down from that, what will happen is, is there's one uh, big group that actually kind of oversees a lot of that, had the, the study of that called Sonoma Technology. They actually kind of smiths to them and they kind of will evaluate that barrier will work in that location. That's what they do as well. That's part of the RP process where Who's chosen for RP will kind of submit it, the barrier proposal to that company and they will evaluate to make sure it will do what we think it's going to do. If I could just make one other, you know, complimentary comment there, because we're air district, uh, we do believe in aesthetics and a lot of benefits, but it seems like our siting should be preferential to places where it may have the greatest benefit. The classic mm -hmm. example to me is at Washington School mm -hmm. that's next to the port. So mm -hmm. as we, it, it may be there are many places that will benefit mm -hmm. from vegetative barriers and um, uh, urban forests. We should think about the highest, most likely protective mm -hmm. effect to potential populations and that might be a little different priority than just pure TCC or just the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, I think this is, I, I hope the subcommittee can think about those as potential criteria and pass it on to the steering committee and to other subcommittees. I dropped a link in the chat. Ned and make the great point that we totally failed to even acknowledge a part of the process early on for Fresno um, and I'm just gonna share br briefly with you, you've seen this iteration of this map, but we think it's just a useful tool, not only for uh, community or uh, CSC members, but for, we actually use this tree, like tell us where you generally want trees in your community tool. And we said vegetative barriers, and, you know, whether it was CSC, 
member or a community member, so just a general public member. We had people do outreach to the general public at some of their various events, so we could get that type of feedback. And then the goal is exactly actually as you just mentioned, you know, just because someone placed it there doesn't necessarily mean it's the best use of that project, but we at least know the priorities of the community and then we can take those priorities and to Aaron's point, perhaps, and this is something that, that we'll definitely discuss in more concrete terms as we develop an RFP with you all, we can then say, okay, well, once we have these priority areas, maybe it's now up to the person who responds to the RFP to get that scientific study done, or at least the foundations of that study established so they can prioritize or propose to us their priorities based on science where the trees would best fit, especially, I would say, in a vegetative barrier type project, again, where it's supposed to be blocking pollution. Um, so this is something that if you all are interested, we could work on a very, very similar type map where, again, the CSC members and then members of the public could start identifying these types of projects. I, I think also it would be really good to have, uh, I don't know if TCC, Little Manila, Puentes, whoever's working on trees, also have little maps already created. Right, good we point. Impose that on ours, if that's okay with you all. If I, if I could real quick. Um, so one of the things, so I would suggest potentially everybody taking a look at the tree plotter um, that the port just purchased. It's on, if you go to the Port of Stockton and go to environmental tab and tree plotter is down towards the bottom on your left. And from that, you can go in and you can see the work that we've done identifying trees that we already have on site. Uh, as well as anything in purple is proposed locations. And I can tell you from my experience, trying to find pro proposed locations for, for trees is an extremely frustrating process. Um, whether it be utilities, mm -hmm. our operations, clearance from railroads, clearance from roads, it's challenging. So one of the, the cool things that we've done is we, we come in here and any one of you guys can manipulate this as well, I believe, I'll have to double check that, but um, you can play with it. And then anywhere we wanna try to identify a proposed planting, we can mark it in here for discussion and then we can do the di due diligence to go and talk to the city, the county, whoever it might mm -hmm. be, to be able to um, start getting those plants in the ground. But it's a really good tool Mm -hmm. And um, we're actually going to have the next port of uh, the port outreach committee. We're going to have the guys from tree plotter come and kind of show everybody how you can utilize this tool a little bit more efficiently. Awesome. But yeah, but yeah uh, take, take a look at it. And, you know, we're happy to be able to provide um, access to this and, and use for for the uh, for this group. It's no problem. So, so, Jeff, I think you're also you're all also already planting on the port site, right? Yes, we are. You can see, so we've highlighted both trees that are in the ground um, currently, as well as where we want, where we're proposing um, plantings in the future. So both, and you can click, it, it, this is great. You can click on a tree. It'll tell you the DBH, the common name, the location, kind of what uh, condition the tree is in. Um, it, 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 was, it was a pretty heavy uh, process to get all of this information in, but um, now that that's done, uh, and we can expand it, we can expand it into the neighborhood too. That was kind of my, my hope when we first got mm -hmm. this, is to kind of start to share it with Boggs Tract and move mm -hmm. east and south. So um, we're more than happy to, to um, have, pay to have the guys come out and survey further into the community. And I'm, I'm assuming, Jeff, you hired somebody, a company to do this on your behalf, I assume, correct? Yes, yeah, it's it's Tree Plotter is who we hired, yeah. Uh, no, I'm talking about to, to install the barrier and the trees themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, the trees, yes, the trees we, well, some of the trees were existing um, mm -hmm. and then others that we planted, we used partial, uh, our own staff, as well as we uh, partnered with the California Conservation Corps um, I think we had some, a couple of folks from Puentes who came and volunteered certain days. So it was just a mixture of, of you know, kind of whoever was on hand and 
could help. And then was the barrier or something different when you put the, we're working on the barrier? The barrier is, is in the works right now. So gotcha. the barrier is, um, I proposed when Lehigh started talking about their expansion, I said at the very least I wanna see as far as the mitigation measures is a vegetative barrier between themselves and the neighborhood. And so one of the cool things that we're planning to do, I had Matt Holmes come out and he's helping with some contacts to, to, to bring and give us a cost estimate to do that. But one of the things we also thought about doing was putting an air monitoring station uh, prior to the, the vegetative barrier going in mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, getting background samples and air quality data and then continue to monitor that area after the location, after the, the vegetative barriers and to see the effectiveness of, of the barrier. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what, that's the plan. Up, I've seen Ned give to the, like, that's exactly what, what we're talking about. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Now, the only caveat is that, that it's going to be right there by Penny Newman, but um, it will be outside of, outside of the port boundaries. And that's mm -hmm. as good as I this can. This is great remember. because it kind of like will extend this project here, will extend that, extend the TCC grant. That's the idea is you kind of start Build kind of extending it all through the community there. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to speak of, uh, to what Ned um, was uh um, talking about earlier and also uh, Marco. So like um, with the TCC, there's already boundaries set. And so um, the where we are tasked to plant trees is where it is, um, um, where there's like he heavy traffic of pollution. So like we're looking at communities um, that have, that are just surrounded by like, um, industry, airport, uh, freeway industry. And so that's where, um, and well, that's where we, that's where the TCC will be, uh, tree plantings will be focused in. And also um, for uh, Little Manila or um, for us on our end, we're, we're focusing on um, um, getting trees to residents and the city is doing more of um, planting on on the streets and mm -hmm. we we do have um, a map already um, created mm -hmm. and we are um, um, it, it we, we have like we have several maps actually in the work mm -hmm. one that tells us where like um, here's a location where it's like um, um, this resident or this like area is in high need of a tree and um i think it's just like the the air quality i think like what what is described as high need is um the air quality and um and heat island mm -hmm. um and also a uh, lack of tree or, or lack of just a, a shade and then um yeah yeah i yeah, and then we're also working on doing like a, a, a photo voice um, map, mm -hmm. tree map of just getting like residents like perspectives, doing like a before and after and, and really like um, seeing where where the where where we are planting trees, um, like how people are feeling about it and, and tracking that whole experience. Brianna, uh, can I can I ask you what the boundaries are for the overall boundaries of your your um, tree planting? Is it all of Stockton? No, it's not all of Stockton. We're mostly focusing on um, um, like a, a South Stockton, downtown and South Stockton. Okay. Most and, of and East South Stockton too. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, so those of those familiar, and we've, we've plotted it a couple of times, but I believe the TCC boundary is almost entirely encompassed within our AB 617 project boundary, our project boundary actually expands a little bit beyond that. So definitely a lot of work done on the TCC that's within our project boundary. Um, that is awesome, Brianna. And I think what I'm hearing, I'm taking a lot of really great notes on before our next meeting, um, what we as a district will do is definitely from you, Brianna, a lot of the maps and the ongoing work um, get that from you, um, from what Jeff just mentioned, the tree plotter locations, I think what, what and I think Margot is the one who said it best, make sure we almost overlay and get like a one maybe big 
map that have all of the ongoing already projects going and that could be the starting point for our next meeting where we talk about how we move forward um how we move forward with with identifying the next projects because maybe once we see that on the map our minds change maybe it's now about expanding current projects um or adding on to the the tail end of current projects rather or we say hey look current projects are doing what we thought we were about to do now we're going to focus on the areas that aren't being focused on so i think that could really help us visually get a better idea um the uh, go ahead Jack, uh, i think that's just really important and the other thing is Scott put in an article about why Detroit people re were res almost resentful towards the free trees that were given. Um, these groups you, we just mentioned, Little Manila, the TCC, um, the different groups have been in the community and, and they work very hard to get surveys and talk to people already. So we need to be doing outreach, but they have done quite a bit already. So they're very- Exactly, there's no need to duplicate or even go in and redo. I couldn't agree more. No one wants to hear, especially if you know there's already ground level residential work happening. No one wants me or Aaron from the district asking them where they want to treat. We're not. We're not there. You are the, all the ones there. And if anything, we just want to support with this new with this new measure. What's already happening? Well, but I think the outreach is is very important. So we just oh, don't... definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think I, outreach on top of what's ha been happening. Go ahead, Scott. I was just going to say, I just thought that I, I ran across that article actually a couple of weeks ago, and I just I just thought there was a lot of really great lessons to be learned in that article, um, really from, a, I guess, an agency perspective and, you know, just uh, just a lot of a lot of uh, potential mistakes to be avoided, I think, in future activities for for folks that do this undertaking. Yeah, I can just say from experience, it's a lot harder than than you think. You can't just say, throw trees at the at the community, and there needs to be a lot of planning. That said, and I definitely we don't have a, you know a ton of time to to sit here and chat about it. But one thing that Jeff mentioned earlier that just I wanted to make sure I think is actually the real reason we want to do an RFP type process is we want the group that's taking on the task of doing all of this whether whether we support the a scientific assessment through recommending technical partners or they do the scientific assessment themselves, that group also needs to, we need to think about, they also need to be the type of people that can create MOUs with the city or do all of the like the logistical administrative work because that's probably arguably equally as important um, to, to Jeff's point. It's not just about, hey, where does a tree go? But it's how do we get the infrastructure there to plant the tree? Um, you know, some people require that it's more than just irrigation, but they require like a sidewalk has to be that, you know, depending on the type of entity we're working with. So um, in our experience, and this is definitely where you all and even some of the people who are on this call today maybe know or you are the organization that would be that organization. In our experience, I'll just say Tree Fresno is that organization for us in Fresno. And they do have that experience of, I mean, working with the city, working with school districts, having that administrative background on how that works. And so we don't have to today enumerate, but definitely keep in mind if you are working on that TCC project or you know, like green lining in the hood, for example, obviously that's a, an ongoing effort of planting trees. So these obviously are things you're already thinking about, I imagine at Little Manila. Um, are you or some partner you're working with going to be the respondent to this RFP that does all of this? Or if not, who are you working with that you think would be that person? Because we writing an RFP and then finding out that there's no one that we know of that could be, that could satisfy all of these, we need to make sure that we have those people kind of already in a row. And I'm just going to share my screen. This is, I will send this out. This is not meant to be comprehensive. This is just as comprehensive as it was from the last time you all gave a lot of great input. These are the suggested implementation and technical partners. Now, they could blend to one and the other. The implementation, meaning these might be the people that help us plant or are the places we plant. Um, and then technical being maybe these are the people that also help us plant, but maybe they do a little bit more of either the outreach or the, in high phase case, the technical understanding to Ned's point about the scientific foundation. Um, you know, we are very familiar with um, 
the Department of Natural Resources. That's a lot of the efforts that went into the pro project plan that you saw that Aaron's team put together. I'm flagging this for you all, because these are the types of folks that will want to start for either bringing into our subcommittee meetings or having you all sort of do outside homework with and then bringing information back um, as we start to ask questions when we develop our project plan. And then let me like, I know for both plans, there's a million dollars in for both plans, right? So like the ideal would be, okay, you each one has a million dollars and you do an RP for a million dollars, but maybe that isn't how it was done. Maybe you do each, maybe little, maybe each group is a hundred grand a piece or, you know, I don't know. I have to figure that part out, right? I mean, mm -hmm. could one group handle a million dollars? They look for a million dollars, you want to do all of this work and this, you know, maybe that's the best way. Which would be great. They're, you know, over the next couple of years, they're working on it, getting MOU set up, or maybe it's smaller ones with individual smaller companies that do some here, some there, you know. So I don't know the answer to that because I don't know the community as well as you guys, obviously, and the, the, the people who, who do this, but it's something to think about as we get further into this is like, how would we want to set it up? Um, and, and there is there a group that ha could handle the giant capacity to, to really do it? I, and I don't know the answer to that. So we have to, we have to figure that part out. I'm kind of looking at you, Nick, because I think uh, you're the you're, you're the gentleman I think who's uh, who's 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 on the ball in this thing. Everybody else, but I think you know you push this pretty hard. I'll make sure that you and I are on the same page with where we're after here. Um, you know, we want to make sure this works. We want to make sure it's successful. We want to make sure the right people are doing it. Is what are really my focus is because I'm I kind of come from the implementation stage of things. It's like you know, stuff's handed to me, and my job is make sure it gets done correctly. Is how I view it, and so I want to make sure that as we're going through this, that we do hit all the points we need to hit. We're, we're, we're addressing the community's needs and concerns, but in the bottom line, we're spending a lot of money. It's gotta be spent correctly, done right, and there's accountability. And, and that's where it comes back to. So that's, kind of, that, that's where I'm really coming from. I'm, I heard a lot of, oh, I'll go to Mary Elizabeth before I share my, my notes that I take. Okay. okay, thank you. So I, I just was wondering, you know, what kind of outreach has gone on at the agency level? Because, you know, partnering with the city of Stockton, and I'm not sure if the city is putting in 1300 trees. Was that the city's doing 1300 trees? Yeah, yes, that's, that's correct. Sorry, Nico, go ahead. That's correct. Like through, through TCC, the community tree planting effort on our end is 650 to 700 trees. And then the city is responsible for the difference to make up, to get to that 2000 tree landmark. And they're doing parks, um, most of the right of way. Um, and we're focusing on residential um, households and um, like uh, planting strips, tree strips, and uh, potentially along the freeway, depending on the neighborhood. So it seems like there must be somebody, you know, at the city that is point on this. I, I saw Grant Kirkpatrick. Is he still doing it? He's um he's sort of like the grant facilitator, but uh, Sue Christie at Public Works is um, coordinating the tree planting effort. Or Public Works is responsible for subcontracting with a company to do the tree planting on their end. So it seems like, you know, the information that they have would be really important to get. And as, yeah, and as well as Caltrans, because, you know, we, we do have a lot of freeways. And, you know, is there somebody over at Caltrans that, uh, you know, should be coming to the meetings or we should be talking to? And then the same for the county. Yeah. So, you know, I think that having those folks, you know, identified early on uh, is uh, super critical, you know, so that maybe something, you know, like what ended up going mm -hmm. down over there, you know, at SUSD, you know, isn't uh, we don't face that situation again. Yeah. That's all, thank you. Perfect. Can I, can I say one thing? Please, please. please. Um, I see some, Jean uh, wrote in the chat that um, City Public Works mentioned that we, that we, I guess the subcommittee need to include care and maintenance of the trees. Um, like the TCC grant that we received doesn't have a budget for maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, so we have like uh, some severe gaps in budgeting for maintenance, for training, uh -huh. um, for irrigation. 
where that's you know we're trying to figure out now on our end is where can we find the money in the budget to make sure the trees that we plant don't die in two years um or in in one summer depending on you know the, right. the rain that we get this year so you know that's where we're at on our end with tcc is you know there's some serious budget shortfalls that um i would hope that there's like I'm, I feel good that there's already discussions in the subcommittee about expanding AB 617 and the money and work that's being done in that project to TCC because we have these gaps in the budget. That's definitely interesting. Go ahead, Ned. <clears throat> Go ahead, Ned. I'll just make a very quick uh, comment. I think it's true that we can have some great plans, implementations, have vegetative barriers, but then there's maintenance issues. and. Now, some you can anticipate, but you know, I must tell you, the city of Stockton has a responsibility to maintain uh, trees in some public areas. And the truth of the matter is they do have the funds. Now, they may claim they're uh, impoverished, but I look at the finances, the actual versus budget and the what the general fund is, and they have very much the capacity for some annual maintenance going forward. So. This is a delicate issue. Uh, you don't want to try and dictate, which we cannot do, what the city's responsibilities are. But at some point, we might point out we have some lovely vegetative barriers. We have some trees that are planted both under TCC and our program. And the city has a responsibility, and perhaps we can suggest what that responsibility is, to maintain them after two, three, four, five years. So I just, I just want to let you know People plead poverty, and it, it burns me a little bit when the city pleads poverty, and yet I can see from the finances, they do have the small amounts of funds that would be needed to be a responsible uh, party in the maintenance of uh, vegetative barriers and trees. Thank you. Go ahead, Nico. Yeah, I, I, I mean, in the grant itself, the, after five years, the city inherits the tree. So hypothetically, they are responsible for maintaining them. I guess our concern is, is the city going to do that when it seems like the city is more focused on tree clearing and sidewalk, you know, taking care of the sidewalks. And so that's, I, that's where we're coming at is do, we want to make sure that the maintenance of the trees actually does happen. It's a great point. And definitely something, I think that alone, at least when we're talking about a project plan as part of our budgeting and our program that we want to put together, we make sure as a committee, and I, I believe, and I'll, I'll, Aaron and I will double check before we send out like a draft, but maintenance and care, you know, is something that we, is our board's concern. It should be a concern to everyone on this committee. We want those funds that we've allocated in the CERP to get us the reductions and the protections more than just the, you know, the one year, however long these trees last if they aren't taken care of. So Certainly something is important to us, it's important to our board, it's important to you all, and we'll definitely make sure as part of the project program plan. Um, uh, and especially, you know, as that gets through CARB approval and these programs move forward, we definitely want to make sure that's all okay. Well, I mean, I think well. to, to piggyback on that a little bit, Jessica, I think it's part of maybe the RFP where the plan they submit has line items that kind of, you know, spells things out, right? I mean, right. we all know that there's, there's a cost. There's a cost that you're going to pay some fees to the company doing this, but also the cost to make sure it's maintained Great. Um, as we move forward here. So I think, you know, the line items we're going to request from them. You know, and, and if I can, you know, I, I know we always, I always hearken back that it's a good example of right now with Tree Fresno, for example, you know, they could be planting more trees with the hypo, say it's the million dollars that you have your same budget for, but their proposal, I imagine, you know, if they are the ones who apply and are part of it, I imagine we would all be happier with fewer trees that last longer than several trees, you know, more trees, even twice as many trees that don't last long. And so that should be, and I agree with Aaron, will be a part of the evaluation process that we hope that they take into account when anyone applies to the, you know, proposes to be a part of this project. Jonathan. Uh, I, I don't know if it's been made, uh, if something we've highlighted it, but. The, we do know that the TCC is only two and a half years uh, of a thing and ours is five years. So of course, timely wise, we definitely want to probably capitalize on 
you know, the TCC overall. And yeah, like mm -hmm. you said, Jessica, it's not definitely not adding more than what we can handle because then we need to make sure we save money for whatever it is with the maintenance and stuff. And the thing is, we don't have city involved in this thing. I invited them, but that's sort of the question that they will have to, they'll be able to share with us and explain it exactly. What will it fully take? Right. right. Um, exactly. So, yeah. So what I'm hearing, and I'm gonna share some next steps because it is 401. Um, couple things. One is we definitely need to schedule another subcommittee meeting. And I think in relation to this second bullet, um, we'll, we'll definitely do what we've done where we find a time that works on your calendars. We'll schedule a meeting. I imagine it will be no sooner than a month away. We wanna give you all time for the rest of these next steps. Um, because from what I'm hearing, of course, we need to develop and distribute that project plan that I mentioned. So you saw that link in the, in the chat earlier. Um, maybe I'll just one more for those that might not have seen it. Heather, if you could drop that again. The link she's about to drop is the very, very similar, if not close to identical to what we'll originally propose for, for Stockton um, for this same type of plan. Uh, we both need to invite partners is what I'm hearing. What Jonathan just mentioned, he invited the city, but we definitely maybe now given a little bit more time, um, maybe someone from the public works department or anyone else. Um, I know we do have folks here from the city, um, from the city manager's office, but maybe other folks that are maybe more involved in terms of like actual maintenance or planning or anything that related to that. We can invite those types of partners, maybe even some of the partners that were just mentioned from TCC. This is an, an ask of all of you. So when you do get the invite, um, you know, invite people you think would be useful for that part of the discussion. I put T CSC facilitator for both of these. And in this case, Little Manila. Uh, thank you, Brianna, for volunteering. Um, we'll uh, prepare a verbal report. So um, someone from that's on the CSC, um, maybe, whether it's Matt or Elaine, who are the, uh, the, the main uh, CSC member or the alternate um, could be the report out person, but definitely working with you, Brianna, on getting a lowdown of what happened today. Um, can prepare a verbal report for the CSC meeting as well as uh, work together with you to propose an agenda. Um, and we can chat a little bit together. Like I said, we won't leave you in a lurch. We'll work together with you and, and Matt, Brianna, um, to, to prep for the next meeting. And then two main things that I found that, that were so, I mean, lots of helpful comments today, but one was the tree plotter locations and two was the TCC Little Manila green lining in the hood, making sure we understand all of the great outreach and groundwork that's already been done. Cause I think that's going to be a really important next step before we talk about where we want to plant trees. Let's talk about where tree planting is already starting to happen or where at least those locations have already been identified. Is there any, big next step that I am missing. It's hard for me to see the chat, so feel free to just unmute. Um, Jonathan's asking about a contact at Public Works, County Public Works. And I think we I mean, have- I have, I have Najib. Uh, yes. Najib has been motivated. I guess they were, they were just recently trained on urban heat islands. Thank God, but I mean, kind of late, but I mean, thankfully. Uh, so he's now trying to look for funding. And so when we talked about AB 617, he was motivated. He's like, all right, let's get involved. But I don't know why he's not here, but we'll we'll talk to him. He's He is a busy guy. He's pretty much the boss. Awesome. Well, the boss is good, especially from that branch. Well, what we'll do is, as always, but we'll definitely, um, now that we have sort of like a, a next step situation here, is we will... Of course, post this video. Like I said, we're amending our, our, our website, but what we'll do before we amend it, we don't wanna wait to post anything. We'll post this video, we'll post those next steps and notes, and then we'll follow up with you all to schedule a meeting. And in that, in that follow-up to schedule, we'll, we'll remind you of some of these next steps. I'll definitely make sure we also just reach out to a lot of you who had some great specifics for us to make sure we captured everything. Uh, and then, like I said, start to really uh, leverage the tools that are already out there and all of the work that's already there. You will see that email from us. You will see a draft project plan um, and you'll probably see several other things unrelated to trees because you are all involved in all the other Stockton stuff. So with that, if there are no other questions, then we will adjourn our first trees subcommittee meeting. Um, first of many. Great. All right. Thank you guys. guys. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you all.